program, which is where we will begin our focus as we enter the e-com world. Our current in-clinic clients love these products. 91% of our collagen sales are from repeat buyers. Yes, 91% are from repeat buyers. So we know once we get these items to the masses with our e-com marketing plan, they will sell like crazy. Sorry, an alert popped up. Which is exactly what we plan to do with an investment, launch our marketing plan and paid ads. For the past 10 years, we have grown our business on our great reputation and client results by getting referrals with no marketing. In 2023, we are partnering with Be Interactive to scale our e-com, starting with our digital info products with upsells and backend offers of our e-com items as we optimize our ads to launch the full-scale e-com strategy. We will also be partnering with Rafiti Media to revive our YouTube page to solidify our authority in the space and build our audience and bring in more organic traffic. Just last month, we posted one of our many client testimonial videos and it has already received 9.7 thousand views. And that's without knowing what we are doing on YouTube yet. We haven't even optimized it and people are finding it because they are hungry for a solution. Just wait until we add the dozens of client testimonial videos that we already have ready and we optimize our page. With this experienced marketing team in place, we will easily begin scaling the e-com side of our business to 1 million in 2023, while continuing to operate the current business, bringing our total revenue from three to 4 million. With the addition of e-commerce, our EBITDA will be 1.6 million, with e-com having the highest net profit margin for us. And by 2025, we will scale total revenue to six and a half million with 3 million coming from e-commerce, bringing our EBITDA up to 3.4 million. A cherry on top of scaling our e-commerce is that with a proven framework for success, we will be bringing on at least 15% of the e-commerce buyers into our virtual coaching program, which means the virtual coaching piece of the business will scale as well, which is great as it's the second most profitable revenue stream for us and very conservatively, we'll be adding $250,000 to the business annually. And with that $3,339 lifetime value, the revenue stream could double what it is today simply by scaling the e-com side. Today, we are seeking a $2 million investment for a 20% stake of our company. With this $2 million investment, we will add fuel to the fire of what is already working and scale shifts that go to new levels. We will scale the e-commerce to 10 million in revenue in the next three to five years while maintaining and steadily growing our existing business and exiting at that time with a $50 million or beyond valuation. We are looking for a strategic investor who has scaled and exited a health and wellness e-commerce brand to partner with. We are also open to profit distributions for the investor from the established and consistent cash flow that already exists. If you are ready to join me to scale this business while helping to end obesity, you can contact me via the info below. And don't forget to check out our YouTube page and watch it grow. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry Thank for the so technical much, stuff. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, Ryan, as you heard this pitch, what was going through your mind? Uh, quite a few things. So I'll start with what I liked. First of all, you obviously have a lot of success stories that you're building off of, right? Huge, huge, right? You have the type of feedback and the type of success that most e-commerce brands dream of having because it's golden ads and it's golden content. And you have you have so much of them that you could probably do nothing for five years and just talk about them forever, right? Ask me how I know. So, so that is, it, it's such, such a big part of this. I thought you did a really good job of showing the pain of the problem and what this looks like if we don't solve the problem over the next 10, 20, 50 years. That's something that a lot of people miss. And I thought you did a really good job at highlighting that. And I also really liked that you have very clear numbers. You know what your acquisition costs are. You know what an average client is worth to you. Very, very good work there. Here's what I think you can do to improve. The idea of our mission is to end obesity 
is, is so common, right? We all know it's a problem. Everybody says that they want to solve it. I never heard in your pitch how you were going to do it differently than everybody else in the world that's trying to do it. Quest says they're going to end obesity. How? By creating delicious snacks that replace sugar and end metabolic disease, right? Very, very clear reason why they are different. And I never heard from that from yours. In fact, I wrote down at one point, we were 15 minutes in and I still don't know what's different. I don't know what's different about this direction. I know you're good at it. I know people like you. I know you have meal plans and coaching and, and programs, but I don't know what's different about shift, set, go that as an investor, I'm like, oh, that's unique in the space. I want to put capital and funds and attention behind that piece that's so different from everybody else. And so that needs to be very clear early in the process to know how this business fits into such a big marketplace. What is it that that makes shift, set, go the thing that people go, oh, when I think about this, I think about them as the solution. That's what's missing early on in the process that I think needs to be backed up. The other piece of this is I I would suggest, and I, I think this is this is a reflection of what's not yet clear in what makes it different, is it would be my suggestion that you leverage what you've built to launch the new arm of the business, which is e-commerce, and you position it as a new business or as a separate business. Because if I'm going to invest in something at a $10 million valuation, I'm going to have a whole lot of questions. And I'm going to be picking apart your current business. And I'm going to be picking apart how this is going to translate to this. But if you say we're going in a new direction, or an, an amplified direction, and we're going to have this arm of the business, and this is new, and we have all these assets to be able to set this on fire very quickly, I as an investor have a lot of my questions closed. And it's a much easier yes for me than to say I'm going to commit to a $10 million valuation because now we've got to get to 20 or $50 million for me to have a meaningful return on my money. Whereas if I see it's a new business or a million dollar business that I'm funding that's going to ride the wave of this other business that has all these testimonials and all this feedback and this following, it's a much easier way for me to justify, oh yeah, this is this is an easy win. I know they'll at least double and I know I can provide some value here. That would be my biggest piece of feedback for what you might want to consider as you take this to other investors. Thank you. <laughs> Emily, not not to put you on the spot, but you know, just briefly, you know, within the next 10, 15 seconds, what would you say to Ryan saying, you know, you lack that unique special thing in your brand that makes you different? Yeah. We say our secret sauce is our coaches and our coaching method and our meal program that reverses rather or that repairs rather than reverses your metabolism. So the fact is our plan works and we have 10,000 people to say that. So to me, that's that's what I always say is our, our secret sauce and our USP. Let me say, let me give you a say a little bit differently. What was the secret to P90X? There were hard workouts. And it was 90 days and they had all these, this feedback, right? But the way that they talked about it was it was muscle confusion. What's muscle confusion? It's a fancy way of saying that you do a different workout every day. So you never get bored. And so you're not working the same parts over and over and over again. And so you have a higher metabolic effect. So when you say we have a coaching plan that works, why? What is it that you do? For example, somebody in your space that I would, suggest putting on a pitch deck would be Noom. Noom mm -hmm. is that app that's like my fitness pal. What is the reason why that's different than my fitness pal? Because they leverage neuroscience and psychology to make you stay on your plan. Oh, that's what I've been missing this whole time was the neuroscience piece of this. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so that's, what's missing in this pitch is obviously your stuff works or else you wouldn't be getting success. But what is different than everybody else that's trying to do it that makes me think of you? Okay. Excellent. Dr. Ziegler, I'm curious what you thought of Emily's pitch deck. 
Yeah, Emily, I, I really thought you did a great job. I mean, this is a huge problem. Like you said, you know, 75% of people, it's amazing that that statistic even exists. Um, so I think that, you know, I really loved all the testimonials that you have. Like Ryan said, those are gold. Use those moving forward. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is that I really wanted to hear more about your expansion plan and, you know, whether that's clear or not, I'm not sure yet, but, you know, I wanted to know how you were going to bring your product products into mass market, or is it going to be Amazon? Is it going to be your website? How are you going mm-hmm. to, you know, let people know about them? Um, and other than that, um, you know, social media, are you utilizing any of that other than YouTube? Currently, no. No. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, you know, huge opportunity there also. Um, And also right now, um, one other question I had was if, you know, you have five physical locations, but are your programs available nationwide yet? Or is that something that is coming? Yeah. So we have all the wholesale accounts. So they offer it inside of their wellness or physician offices throughout the country. And then virtual coaching can go anywhere in the United States okay. that we do currently. Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest thing was that I wanted to hear more about your expansion plan and kind of what that would look like. If I were going to give you a ton of money, um, then I would want to know what you're using it for um, mm-hmm. in a little bit more detail. Yeah. But overall, great job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ziegler. Sam Prentice, controller of the purse at the fund. What what feedback or questions would you have for Emily? Yeah, well, first, the feedback I give you, Emily, is I was very impressed and really enjoyed the presentation. Um, there's a couple things that I'll get to here, but just in general, uh, the solution that you did get to is one that you know resonates with me very strongly because I kind of went through some of those same shifts of so, you know back and forth on different diets and weight weight plans and whatnot. But getting to a point where the focus was being able to do the things that I love doing later on in life, being the primary focus, just rewired my brain to that being a much, a much more um, desirable goal than just maybe a physical look or those kind of things. So that was one, as I want to let you know, that, that at least resonated very strongly. And then just some of the nuances that I picked up through the presentation that I thought were cool was just like the ability to put up like signs and things and like anchor in when you hit certain milestones the psychology behind a lot of that, just from having personally gone through that, I know that to be really, really successful. <clears throat> so seeing that was good, I, in my notes, in, in, uh, I'll just go through them just, you know, at least for the way it hit me as an investor, I did write down that I thought the length of time to get to a solution was a little bit too long because I think that you honestly, it's kind of like in the first two minutes, we didn't need a whole lot of convincing, or at least for me, and this could be my own take because I've, I've been around this for a bit. Uh, I didn't need a whole lot of convincing that America has an obesity problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, we're good at the problem. The problem is there. We're like, okay, like we're convinced the stats, like they speak for themselves. This is easily falsifiable that this is a 75% thing. So that's good there. Um, I actually think that the advice that Ryan was giving, I, I wrote down a specific note here that I thought was, was kind of cool. The Weight Watchers example, you know, Weight Watchers, you mentioned that other big players in this space are acquiring smaller pieces. The reason that you have consolidation happening. So at first you had this big outreach and Weight Watchers was the big thing. You had Weight Watchers, Denny Greg, whoever else. That was your big group that you know brought the idea of obesity equals bad. Well, now they are acquiring fragmented sections of that. And that's the opportunity you have is you're going after a fragment of the section that understands this, they're acquiring that because the fragments need to be served in ways that resonate with that person. Not everybody is gonna resonate with the model that you have, but they will, there there is a huge segment that does resonate that's actively growing. The growing towards functional fitness and be able to do the things you love when you're old, that sector is definitely growing. And so for me, like from an investor standpoint, that's when I had like my aha moment. And actually it was hard to listen to the rest of it because I was like, this is so cool. Because you have a really clear path to if you focus on your niche customer that's there and you really serve them well, that acquisition is is a very simple thing to pursue forward with. So that was kind of the place where I would say you can maybe take a little bit of the time from convincing people there's a problem and put it into specifically the way that you serve your customer very uniquely. And that would be, I think, a huge huge tweak to how the investor perceives it, in my opinion. I'm Um, I'm sorry to jump in here. I just, that is such good advice to go after the fragment 
because there are big players that want to buy up businesses that serve the fragment, especially mm -hmm. when you're a biohacker and when you have a very core market, that is such good advice from Sam. And I would, I would, I would add to it is like the people that want P90X aren't the same people that want what you have. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just, it's totally different. The people that want CrossFit aren't the same people that want what you have. And like, it's not that any of those things are bad. Is that you serve a very specific segment, and it's actually a segment I personally believe in really, really strongly, because I like to do the things I like to do. And I don't like to get injured, and that's just is what it is. So um, that's that. Uh, the I know I'm repeating some things here. The hundred skew it mentioned a hundred skew product line or hundred products or those kind of things. Yeah. I wanted more detail on that just a little bit as to like okay. what specific part of the customer journey you're serving. Um, and know that this comes from someone who really believes in your customer journey. And so that's why I was curious. And it would be nice to just unlock a little bit of that curiosity. And then I was curious on the customer acquisition cost. This is another another day that you said it's $50 or whatever. I was curious, what is the driver of those referrals? Is it primarily physicians? It's it's not. It's, it's clients, it's not, client results. All, all, all clients. So this is all mm -hmm. word of mouth. Correct. Yeah, interesting. Very cool. That's great. And then lastly, it was just use of funds, just a little bit more of, you know, projecting like saying, hey, here's what you use the money for is to like, here's how cash accelerates what we were planning on doing. I don't think like we had a clear go button for what cash was going to do. But um, other than that, like really, really good job. Very, very impressive pitch, very gripping. And your mission is one that I wholeheartedly support. Thank you. I'd like to ask, how would you describe the core customer? Is it? She's the 50-50. She's about 50 with about 50 pounds to lose. Okay, that's perfect. our that's, awesome. that's our perfect client. Okay, so you, the the person who stays with you longest has the most results and spends the most money with you is over fifty and has fifty pounds to lose. Correct. Okay, that's a very that's a very specific mm -hmm. clientele. I love it. Right, and that's not the person who's going to go do CrossFit. Absolutely so, not. <laughs> so, so, but but after watching your pitch in the after the first fifteen minutes, you could have just as easily pitched us on a CrossFit product because okay. there wasn't, because there wasn't a specific <laughs> thread throughout the whole thing, speaking to that person. But if you clarify that now, a, somebody who in, worked at Weight Watchers can look at that and say, ah, I know that client. I know why that's different. I know how to help that. I know why that person thinks differently than the person that wants to lose 20 pounds. And that's the specificity that, that I'm referencing. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Mm. Awesome. Thank you so much, Emily. And thank you, Sam, Ryan, Dr. Ziegler for that feedback. Uh, much appreciated. Our next pitch deck that we're going to view today is going to be from Tara Avery uh, from the beautiful state of Pennsylvania. So Tara, the floor is yours. Please present your pitch. Tari, can you hear us? Thank you so much for the opportunity to pitch today. Go get them, Tara. <laughs> there is a reason why they say a dog is a person's best friend. Cats are too, but for many, dogs are true and cherished members of the family. Have you ever dealt with the death of a beloved pet? The pain can be unbearable. Like many, I have had a dog and cat die. But as the owner of a pet care business, I have experienced 257 additional losses. I lost some amazing fur kids and was left feeling helpless, offering condolences, wishing I could do more. Could these deaths? have been prevented or delayed? What was the root cause of these deaths? My name is Tara Avery, and I am founder and CEO of Avery's Mobile Pet Spa, a mobile grooming business. Health and wellness are the cornerstone of our services since launching in 2008. We provide health assessments with grooming and all services are performed by a certified pet stylist. In 2009, after 18 months of building the business part-time, 
I went all in and quit my lucrative multiple six-figure consulting career at a top three consulting firm. And I used my knowledge and experience to grow the largest mobile pet grooming service in the Philadelphia area. We hired over 200 people, generated over 650,000 in two years, and maintained a 37% profit margin to dominate the market. Next, we opened two storefronts in our most profitable counties and created a certification training program for our growing team. We also leveraged partnerships to hire the most vulnerable populations and give back to the community. But amidst this growth and success, something was bothering me deeply. Dogs continue to die, many from kidney failure. Each of these deaths hit me deeply and in a uniquely difficult way. But then Rude died, which was the final wake-up call that I must find a way to do something about this. His loss was excruciating. He was a 14-year-old collie mix, and his mom found a lump on his gums. She began brushing Rude's teeth to improve oral hygiene, then she took him to the vet. The vet suggested putting him under anesthesia to have his teeth clean. Before the surgery, blood tests were taken to, to, to confirm he was strong enough for surgery. There were warning signs, but the surgery went forward because his teeth needed to be clean. Within 11 days, Rude died from kidney failure. The anesthesia combined with his age caused his kidneys to fail. It was a terrible way to die. And it was all because mom loved him and wanted to remove plaque and tartar from his teeth and gum line. Sometimes the cure is worse than, than the disease. These deaths coupled with hundreds of client requests to focus on the total pet led Avery's to expand beyond just holistic grooming services. With 10,218 pet parents serviced and a 37% profit margin, I was motivated to offer more. After 15 years in the pet industry and research with experts, we launched Avery's Holistic Paws, a wellness product line created to improve a dog's quality of life and longevity. To determine which problems we should solve first, we went straight to our clients. We learned their challenges and their needs and researched the root causes of all pain points shared. We created a focus group of our top 200 clients and held 140 40 minute phone interviews about their pets' habits, health issues, and needs. We followed up with a survey to check in. We received responses from over 400 pet parents and learned that people are seeking support with many issues that originate with poor gut health. 70% of pets are battling allergies, digestive issues, poor oral hygiene, they need breath control, tartar reduction, suffering from anxiety, dry itchy skin, they're licking and biting their paws, they have yeast infections, the list goes on. And 81% of our responders said they want probiotic dental sticks to combat the problem of poor oral hygiene, get breath control, and reduce tartar. Pet parents are aware that oral health affects the total health of pets inside out, but they wait too late to act. Despite the overwhelming impact on a pet's overall health, their dental hygiene is often neglected and most pet parents wait until problems arise to fix it. Periodontal disease can have devastating effects on the liver, heart, and kidneys, and 70% of fatalities caused by dental disease can be prevented. When left untreated, this highly common phenomenon can lead to major damage of major organs, as well as potentially fatal diseases. Avery shared the benefits of probiotics, which helps to improve gut health and reduces bacteria in the mouth and bloodstream. Then we surveyed our clients' needs. Based on survey results from the 400 responders and marketplace data, the number one reported issue was a convenient, effective, and tasty way to improve oral health and help prevent pet periodontal disease. 
According to PetMD, probiotic dental sticks helps to effectively clean teeth and provide systemic improvement by 33%. Benefits of Avery's dental sticks include a groove surface, satisfying the dog's need to chew, the ingredients help remove plaque and tartar buildup, and promote healthy gums and teeth. It's an easy and effective option for owners to boost the immune system, improve digestion, reduce allergies, and improve skin and coat health. Look, investors, I have to show you the market size and trends, but I also want to remind you that we are already in the homes of hundreds of passionate pet parents each month. We have a product that clients have asked us to create and is effective in helping clean teeth and control breath. Data shows that the pet industry is nearly recession-proof. Regardless of the economy, people will keep buying what their pets need. Overall pet industry spend is $110 billion, with 8% growth expected year over year. The total available market of global spend for pet snacks and treats was $33 billion in 2021, and is expected to expand at a compound annual growth rate of nearly 12% from 2022 to 2030. The treats category is growing faster than the more mature pet food category and accounts for 42% of the pet services spending. Pet owners across the US have been spending significantly on their pets' well being and nutrition. Our serviceable, available market for healthy pets, treats, and supplements is $9 billion. Our serviceable, obtainable market is $4 billion. Based on these figures, it is clear that the pet industry is growing wildly and an exciting space to be in for an innovative pet product. The benefits of Avery's Dental Sticks include one product that solves more than one problem. And based on scientific studies, our formulation is 25% more effective than our competition. Based on the expertise of pet nutritionists, we decided to focus on the root causes versus treating symptoms. Keeping the mouth clean and reducing bad bacteria that circulates throughout the body is key to improving overall health. Our clients have asked for this product so we created it and distributed samples. Our product solves two problems. In one, addressing oral care and also gut health with probiotics. Avery's Mobile Pet Spa has worked with 50,000 pets and has corporate partnerships with pet-friendly employers and hotels. We worked with Urban Outfitters, Pet Plan Insurance, and we have partnerships with the Ritz-Carlton, Four Seasons, the Philadelphia Eagles, Philadelphia Flyers, and a plethora of A-list celebrities, many of whom you know by name. We have a very well-respected brand. We know how to build a successful brand with raving fans, and we'll do it again. Have I mentioned that one of our grooming clients has used us every seven days for the last 14 years? Our average lifetime value of a client ranges from $10,000 to over $100,000 conservatively, depending on tenure and frequency. Now the market is asking Avery's for a new oral care solution and gut health option, and we intend to fill that need. Avery's took two separate products and we combined ours into one effective solution. Pet Lab Co. is a supplement company and Greenies is designed for oral care. Both have one product, to solve one problem. We provide two products in one, and it's more effective than our competing products. Customers want to have a great tasting, effective solution, and they want to know that the product will work and their dogs will actually eat it. Here is some feedback from Pet Lab Co's purchases. Customers have spoken. One client states that the product was too hard, the other said the dog vomited. The dog wouldn't eat the treat. It also wasn't returnable. Not good. We have an active strategy and execution now, driving awareness and engaging with clients and leads. We will leverage the existing customer base to help solve pet parents' problems and move into the product space. We have aggressive sales targets, starting with 668,000 in the first year, growing to 2 million in year two. By year five, projections show a $15 million 
sales goal based on compounding demand, reordering via subscriptions, e-commerce, and retail placements. To drive revenue growth, we will support our pet parents on how oral health affects total health of the pet inside out, driving to our sales funnel and nurturing to buy. Our strategic goals and tactics include driving action to improve oral health, to improve the total pets from the inside out earlier in life, using regular emails with strong content, social media, and industry publications, targeted messaging that speaks to pet parents so that they know we hear and understand them so that they take earlier action to resolve their pain. Lead generation via paid ads, directing to a lead magnet, to grow email lists from online platforms and paid ads to fill our sales pipeline. We will attend community events and have a highly converting website to garner four to 5% conversion rate on pet parent traffic. We have the best team. Our teamwork, makes our clients' dreams work. When you service over 50,000 pets in 15 years, you know that the team is the gas in the tank. As the founder and CEO with my corporate background focused on data-driven marketing, sales, and business development, I created a team with the same values and passion for pets and people. Amy is our customer service and quality assurance savant, She's the voice of our customer. She takes feedback from buyers and ensures total satisfaction. Bob has had digital marketing, his digital marketing agency for almost 30 years, and he's helped over 300 multiple large businesses. We have spoken to Turnkey about growing our new product line, and we're confident in their abilities to help us reach our sales goals on Amazon. Dog Connectors is a pet influencer agency with massive results and experience competing against brands generating well over $100,000 a month. And we have an open advisorship position available as part of our ask, and we'll talk more about that later. Key tactics discussed previously will help us hit our revenue goals, and we are already underway. Our prototype products are already in the hands of customers, and they have given very positive feedback. Our first full batch of 1,200 units will be listed on Amazon and we will kickstart the launch by sending our beta testers to the listing to reorder. Our existing client base will help us accumulate sales. I wanna remind you, I've already built a business from scratch. I know that client acquisition and retention is the key to business success. Many businesses that started in 2008 are no longer around. In 2019, our neighboring Petco tried to poach me from my business. And months later, that location shut down. In 2020, even more businesses bit the dust during COVID. We are still here because of our clients. We have people calling from 15 years ago with new pets that they want to use our service. Why? Because I've nurtured them through the sales life cycle and beyond. I know when I spend money to acquire a client, what their lifetime value is. And I don't believe in wasting my investments. We are seeking $200,000 for a 10% stake. The bulk of the investment is for accelerating customer acquisition. Marketing and audience building and partnerships will be key drivers. We have earmarked funds for team expansion when the time is right. We don't need your investment to launch. We're launching regardless, but an investment would help us move much faster. We are also seeking an introduction to a pet expert with experience exiting an eight figure brand. Although this investment is for equity and the product brand only, I'm fully committed to using my existing grooming business and its happy customer base to supercharge the growth of Avery's holistic paws. Thank you so much for your time. I can be contacted here and I'd love to take questions if you have any. Ah, uh, everyone who's in the chat here live in the Zoom room, give a little love to Tara. I'm I'm getting text messages from personal friends who are loving 
this pitch right now uh, as it's live stream. So good job, Tara. Thank you so much. Dr. Ziegler, what uh, feedback would you have here for Tara and her pitch deck? And what questions might you have about her and her brand? Yeah, Tara, I was incredibly impressed by your presentation. I thought you were very concise. Um, you knew what you you know wanted to say. You were really on the ball there, which I really, really loved. Um, I was impressed by, you know, the research that you've done, the focus group that you had just to, you know, see what people were really having problems with with their pets. Um, I think you have, you know, a great background overall. And I do think you could have maybe gotten to the point a little quicker on what you were targeting, because I felt like you talked about you know, kidney issues, and then you move to dental and then gut. And I just, I guess I wanted to see that tied in a little bit better um, because I kind of felt like you were jumping around a little bit. Um, but other than that, you know, the start of it was really great. Um, let's see, I loved the comparison chart that you did um, with greenies and if it was pet lab, I don't remember. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool because I do, you know, I always have the question, you know, what makes the product stand out? So for this, it's, it's a probiotic, you know, are there other, um, probiotic dental sticks on the market? Yes, but they typically address just one issue. Okay. So yours is addressing more than that, I guess. Okay. Um, hmm. and then, you know, I did see on the chart that where you were going to get most of your growth um, was through hotels. Um, so I did want a little bit more on that. Um, and I guess how you're going to reach them. I wanted to I wanted to know a little bit more about that because that seemed to be most of the growth, um, if I'm not mistaken. So um, once we implement our strategy for expanding into hotels, it will rev up our growth. Um, but it will also, the growth in general will be compounded on the fact that we're working with great partners now and helping us to uh, expand our footprint on Amazon. I'm working with a retail consultant that has an existing relationship with a similar, with a pet product, I will say. Um, and she is opening many doors for us uh, and allowing us to have some introductions with some major corporation, uh, hotels, excuse me, um, for us to be able to have placement of our doggy treats in the hotels. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, I thought you did an awesome job and hey, congratulations. It's great. Thank you, Dr. Ziegler. Thank you so much, Jenna. We appreciate that. Mr. Prentice, what, what feedback or questions would you have here for Tara and her brand? Yes, sir. Well, first off, uh, Tara, Tara, I was going to say, I went through here. I uh, I had a lot of notes where I'd written down some question marks or things to circle back with you on when we chatted. And you, I believe you actually hit every one of them with your presentation. So you did a very good job, like answering a logical progression of, of and I really, honestly, I liked that you started with your brand journey. It was kind of cool to get a quick walk through like what's your brand journey and your even your personal entrepreneurial journey to that point. So I thought you did a very good job laying out a very methodical, logical way to approach what you'd gone through there. So I really like that personally. That's how my brain works. So that was nice. Um, I would second what Jenna said that having a little bit more focus overall on the pitch, there's a couple pieces there. The focus, like making that translation between dental health to kidney failure. I get it. Um, this is the opposite of, of Emily's pitches. I have very little experience in, in this side of things. So when I had pets last, I was a kid. And this was way before pet treats were a big thing. You, you fed them, you know, broccoli bones that hopefully clean their teeth. And that was the best you did. Um, but that, that being said, so this is, this is one where that educational piece, I think you could make it a little bit more succinct there. And then also with some of the business plan, you may also look at making that slightly more succinct as well. Because what I heard from this, from an investor standpoint, and, and I know this is early stage, I'll get to that in my questions here. But what I heard from an investor standpoint is a lot of possibilities and not so much. I think there's a couple of things where it'd be nice to say, hey, here's a very clear go-to-market plan. Example being, um, let me just skip past my notes because I asked about USP. You did a good job comparing that market trends. Okay, you alluded to a strong demand from the, like, the cross-pollination with your current business. Okay, so you mentioned that and you like, alluded to it and gave me just like a little tiny nugget as to this could happen. But to me, that's like your clearest, I believe, I don't know for sure, I believe that's your clearest go-to-market strategy. 
for your first product launch. And so if you say, hey, here's what we did and you walk through like how you designed the product, you walk through the feedback you had there and said, hey, here's how many customers we have right now that have said, I want to buy this. Or if you've done a pre-launch or right? whatever, whatever we've done to show what your current demand is, that would be helpful to me to kind of see what your launch plan looks like to get me to that number. What, what are your current sales right now? So we're still in a pre um, okay. launch phase. Yes, we don't have uh, very many, but we did offer to a select few of our VIP clients mm -hmm. an option to purchase yes. product. Um, and we're just shy of 2000. Um, Perfect. It's only been going for, you know, a week or so. Yes. Okay. So I have two last pieces of feedback and then this is, that's really helpful. So one, I wouldn't shy away from in your pitch mentioning where you're actually at in the business because otherwise it leaves more questions for me as an investor. So if you say, okay. hey, we're in pre-launch phase right now and you own that, then yes. the other thing I would counsel you is don't feel like you have to have 50 other things that you could do. Have three things you're going to do really, really well with your launch because that's what an investor is going to hear. Like, what are the three things you're going to do? Here we could get into retail on this. That actually scares me more because I hear as a launch entrepreneur or uh, three entrepreneurs trying to go out and accomplish 50 things versus three people looking to accomplish three really good things. So that's my, my feedback I'd give you at that. And mm -hmm. then in that list of like the type of customers you go after, we all know from like a business running standpoint that you normally get customers from like an afflicted, oblivious or informed customer. Um, that's kind of the idea as a way where we go. In your case, you have some very clear afflicted customers like walking through, like explain to the investor who you're going after why they're responding to those things. Having that conversation for a pre-launch brand is really important. So if you can nail in and be, be really clear with your customer avatar and say, here's why they're going to buy, that's going to going to solve that up a little bit, I think. Okay. So our customer avatar uh, is mainly female um, and they have a strong desire to keep their dogs healthy. Um, I'll give you for an instance. My uh, number one buyer uh, has older pets. And her concern is that now that they are older and they already have an existing issue, she's now trying to remedy the problem and yeah. stave off further damage. Yeah. I have another client that has younger pets um, and her dogs are, you know, not even middle age, maybe two years old. And yeah. she has an understanding that starting earlier, preventing uh, a potential issue with dental disease and the overall bad bacteria flowing through um, the body and, and circulating throughout. Yeah. Yeah, the bloodstream will make a difference. So um, it really just depends on the person, but the, or excuse me, the person's um, situation. But typically the avatar is a female um, with, with dogs that have an invested uh, need for them to remain healthy and is looking for something all natural and effective, uh, more effective than what's out there mm -hmm. and works from the inside out. Yeah, very good. That, that's a great answer. And I would say that like, that's still on that point of things there, I would say that the increased focus around, so like, like with that, even that answer there, it was like, okay, well, there's this person might need this, or this person might need this, or this person might need that. It's also pretty clear to say right now, the market is what you, you did in your presentation. The market is buying this and they're buying two or three products to solve one solution. And so we have a very clear, we have a very clear demonstration that people understand the problem and there's an afflicted customer base. And if we can get our product in front of those eyeballs, we're going to be able to acquire that customer. That's it. Cool. Very well done. Excellent. Like, honestly, you covered so many points in the presentation. I was very impressed. You did really, really well. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank or you. if you can answer Sam Prentice's questions uh, before, before you ask he them. asked them, uh, you're, you're already here. So <laughs> <laughs> terrific job. Uh, Ryan, what feedback or questions would you have here for Miss Avery? All right. So if you listen to this feedback, it's going to change your life. Oh, we're out of time. All right, so <laughs> Tara, this is this is first of all what I like. Your background and your obvious stick to itiveness is very obvious, and I thought you did a great job connecting your past business success with this new venture. Good work with that. The second thing that I love is the market that you're in. We have two former capitalism community members founder of Pet Honesty, founder of Zesty Paws. Both are nine-figure exits. One spoke at Capcom last year. So this is a great market to be in. And my favorite part of your pitch was the comps. When you had all of the different brands on there, 
I would have, I would have suggested that you milk that a little bit because you, you know, the market is big. You have tons of comps to show how big the market is. It's a really sexy slide that you went through very quickly to get to other details. So okay. that's, that's a really important piece of it. The other thing that I really liked about your pitch was that you have a clear differentiator in the marketplace, which is that you're doing purposeful chews. For example, in the supplement world, people think supplements are saturated. Supplements are not saturated. Generic supplements that is vitamin D and calcium, that's saturated. But when you have a clear market with a clear difference in the market, supplements ain't saturated. So I thought you did a good job connecting that, but I had to work really hard to find it. It took me a <laughs> long time to make the connection between dental health and then chronic illness and you're doing the chews as I, I had to work. I had to like really piece it together. If you had just told me up front, we're creating dental chews because all patents chronic health problems start in the mouth. Let me tell you a story about, right? That's yeah. not like, now I'm like, this is her brand. That's her person. That's the problem ready for story. Whereas in this one, I had to kind of weave it together. And about two thirds of the way through, I was like, oh, shoot. Okay. Got because <laughs> That's why the chronic disease in the mouth. Okay. Okay. Now, now I get it. Don't make me work that hard. Okay. My biggest piece of feedback for you is that your pitch had way too many details in it. And okay. details are reasons for me to pick apart problems. So for example, one of the details that you put in here was that we're going to have a highly converting website with 4% conversions and we're going to drive traffic to a lead mech. I could come up with nine questions about just that. How are you going to get 4% conversion rate? Who's your copywriter going to be? Have you ever had a 4% conversion rate before? What's the ad going to say? What's your lead magnet going to be? How are you going to get around Facebook changes to draw driving check? Right. I could have nine questions on something that is a very insignificant part of your overall business plan. The only, and there were a lot of those details. What I need to know from you is product, market, and how I'm going to win. So product, you're clear on. Market, you're clear on what's the secret weapon that you bring to the table. For example, instead of saying, I have this friend who does influencer support, show me a picture of one of the celebrity clients that loves. <laughs> Just show me and give me a quote about yeah. how great you are. That goes so much further than telling me about Hank who once ran an Instagram influencer ad for <laughs> this brand. It's just, it show me, don't tell me. You did a lot of telling me about details, but you have all the proof. Just, just show me it. And I'd be foaming at the mouth to be a part <laughs> of this brand. So, so to wrap all of this together, you have all of the important pieces, but I didn't, I had to listen really hard for them because there were a lot of details in between that were throwing up questions in my mind that you would be better just to remove. In most okay. pitches, there's one big belief that you're trying to get the customer or the, or the investor to believe. One big thing. In yours, it could be that all chronic illness in pets starts in the teeth and you have the solution. That's it. You don't, need to, you, need, you don't need to convince me of anything else. That would be one approach to a pitch. Another would be that... I have a secret advantage in this space because I know this person and this person. That's another, mm -hmm. that's one full belief. That's all you need to convince me of. And how is my money going to help with that? Mm -hmm. Anything that doesn't fall into that belief, you can safely remove and it will actually make your pitch more persuasive, not less. Whereas details mm -hmm. throw up questions that they go, well, can she, has she done this? Who's going to do that? And you're like, don't even ask me that. Usually when people throw in more, too many details, it's because they're trying to present a strong plan in an area where they're weak. Instead mm -hmm. of doing that, just focus on where you're strong and you'll crush this brand. You will crush this brand. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, such valuable feedback. Thank you so much, Ryan. And thank you, Tara, for sharing thank that you. with us. 
I, I am very excited to see where this goes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our final pitch of this quarterly pitch week. Uh, we will now hear from the wonderful Michelle Darnell from yeah, Michelle. Bowling Green, Kentucky. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right, Michelle, the floor is yours. Hi. Present yeah, when you're ready. All right. You there? We're here. Okay. All right. Thank you. We have gone nuts over gone nuts, and we know that you will too. I'd like you to meet Courtney. Courtney is a mother of three small children. And as any parent of young children knows, they only eat three foods, chicken nuggets, mac and cheese, and peanut butter. And all Courtney wants to do is get something healthy into her kids' stomachs. But she's concerned about the ingredients in their favorite peanut butter. And she doesn't want to be that mom who's feeding her kids things that aren't good for them. Because we all know choosy moms choose better. Now, meet Micah. Micah is a 40-year-old pharmacist from Alabama with two small children. Three years ago, Micah was diagnosed with MS. She found through research that she was able to reduce and even eliminate some of her symptoms of MS by following the specific carbohydrate diet. Unfortunately for Micah, she was no longer able to eat one of her favorite snacks, nut butter, due to some of the oils and processed sugars found in them. The majority of mass market nut butters are loaded with processed oils, palm oil, soybean oil, and mono and diglycerides. Phew, that is a mouthful. In an article from US News and World Report, it states that big companies love palm oil because it's inexpensive, it's shelf stable, but palm oil has been linked with inflammation, diabetes, heart disease, and GI issues. Not only does it cause health concerns, but the article also states that palm oil is in fact not a health food and can be detrimental to human health and is absolutely detrimental to planetary health. And soybean oil? It leads to obesity, diabetes. It can cause neurological conditions like autism, Alzheimer's, anxiety, depression, and men, listen up. Soy lowers testosterone and sperm counts. And finally, mono and diglycerides. The Institute of Medicine, now known as the National Academy of Medicine, states that there is no safe level to eat. I repeat, the Institute of Medicine says there is no safe level to eat. And all of these peanut, all of these oils are found in the peanut butter that your mother fed you. Lucky for Courtney, Micah, and millions of others, we have a solution. And not only do we have a solution, but we have a solution that our customers rave about and purchase time and time again. That solution is Gone Nuts. At Gone Nuts, we believe that food is medicine and how you fuel your body does matter. We believe that you should not have to worry about what is in your food. And we believe that nut butter should be made with ingredients that you know and trust, not a bunch of chemicals. We believe that eating healthy can and should taste great. So what's the problem? Big butter. The global peanut butter market was valued at $5.7 billion in 2021 and is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 6.9% to 2028. The whole global nut butter market size was valued at $51.6 billion in 2021 and is projected to grow at a rate of 2.6 to 2028. And what's that number one selling peanut butter in America? Jif. And all of those ingredients that we just discussed are found in their line of peanut butter. We own production intentionally. We manufacture our own products 
in-house so we can control quality and quantity of our products. Did you know that despite the fact that peanut butter is one of the FDA's most controlled foods, an average of one or more rodent hairs and 30 or so insect fragments are allowed for every 100 grams or three and a half ounces. That means that on a typical PB&J sandwich that you are feeding your kids, they could be eating up to one or more rodent hairs and 30 plus insect parts. Because let's face it, who only puts one serving of peanut butter on their PB&J? That also means that for your average 16 ounce jar, there could be almost five rodent hairs and almost 140 insect parts in each. We want to own our manufacturing so we can control every aspect of quality. Why? Because we want to continue to deliver the most amazing products and we want it to be no bugs guaranteed. Last summer, we had a problem with our almonds and we were able to trace it all the way back to the California Almond Board and found out that it had to do with the droughts in California. We contacted our supplier and because we have such a great relationship with them, they contacted Blue Diamond, found us another lot of almonds to try and then talked them into shipping us one case. When those almonds worked, we then talked to our supplier and they purchased the whole pallet for us and are holding them and shipping them to us as needed. If we didn't own our manufacturing, that would have been thousands of jars of bad almond butter. I purchased Thaw Nuts because it is good, clean, and delicious. It is good for the body and good for the soul. The first year that I owned Gone Nuts, we focused our efforts on production. When I purchased Gall Nuts, the average production cost of the almond and cashew butter was around $6.25 a jar, and the peanut butter was around $5 per jar. By taking advantage of buying power and changing how it was produced, I was able to take that production cost and cut it in half. What did this mean? It meant that we took an amazing product that already had 40 to 50% margins to one that now has 65 to 70% margins on all products. It meant that our cost of goods went down and our net profits went up. We have averaged about 30,000 in sales each year, but it was not until I joined the capitalism.com incubator in October that our sales really started to increase. Until that time, we had not focused on growing our e-commerce business. Since that time, we have increased our social media presence, began to attend vendor events, and have started to see an increase in our online sales. In fact, in the last 150 days, our sales have increased 875% over what they were from January to September of last year, and this is without paid advertising. But how do we continue to grow our online sales? We recently partnered with Ashworth Strategy, a leading e-commerce growth agency in the U.S. We will be relaunching our online sales the 1st of March, right around the same time that we will be attending the Arnold Classic Fitness Expo. At the Arnold Classic, we will be meeting with influencers in the health, fitness, and nutrition space to continue to grow the Gone Nuts brand. In recent weeks, we had an influencer in the CrossFit space with over 35,000 followers post about our products and sign on to be an affiliate. With this, we will hit 1 million in sales in the next 12 months and 5 million at the end of three years. Ashworth's record speaks for itself in the testimonials of their clients. They have on average, a five and a half times client ROI and have generated over 55 million in total revenue. Our team includes Hope House, Ashworth Strategy, Capitalism.com Incubator, 
and arcade nuts and snacks. Home. Bowling Green, Kentucky is where I was born and raised. It's where I'm raising my family. It's home to the Corvette, Western Kentucky University, Big Red, and was just voted the number two city in the South for a weekend getaway by Travel and Leisure. It's community. It's where I have grown Beatbox, my other business, and where I want to grow this one. Because I am part of this community, I have a desire to give back to our community. Our long-term goals for Gone Nuts include partnering with a local agency called Hope House. Hope House is a faith-based community development center here in Bowling Green, and they exist to alleviate physical and spiritual poverty through gospel restoration. And they do this in many areas, but one of those is a 12-month recovery program for men and women. I believe in their mission, and I have recently started employing their residents at Beatbox, and we have partnered for, with them for this to be our main source of employees for Gone Nuts. I want myself and Gone Nuts to be a light in our community and a light to their residents who have experienced times of darkness in their lives. But why me? I am a Christian, a wife, and a mother of three very active kids. I strive every day to teach them to live a life of health and wellness, and that as athletes, how they fuel their body does matter. I have a master's degree in exercise physiology from WKU, and this truly began my love for health and wellness. I founded Beatbox Market, a local healthy food hub, in September of 2014 from nothing and out of my mom's garage, and I have grown it to almost 900000 in annual sales. And in 2022, Beatbox was voted Best of Bowling Green for Healthy Food. I also have a black belt in Goju Shirei Karate. And this is where I first learned to crush nuts. And I firmly believe that even in my 20s, martial arts taught me discipline, drive, and determination. And those are characteristics that I carry with me to this day. And why not me? I crush nuts for a living. I'm asking for a $200,000 investment for a 10% equity stake in Gone Nuts. Also, for a small equity stake, I'm looking for a strategic partner with knowledge in food distribution and or an influencer in the health and wellness space. All of this will add fuel to an already burning fire. So who's going to go nuts with Gone Nuts? Thank you for your time. And I welcome any questions that you may have, or fee feel free to contact me with any questions. Ah, thank you so much, Michelle. That was absolutely phenomenal. If you're here in the Zoom room with us, give some love and some hashtags to Michelle. As a former part-time resident of Bowling Green, Kentucky, you, you've done <laughs> the city proud. Uh, Dr. Ziegler, I would love to hear what feedback you might have for Michelle and her pitch here. Yeah, Michelle. So first of all, you did an awesome job. Um, you resonated with me right away because I have two little boys um, and all they eat is cheese, bread and nut butter. So the amount that we consume in our house is insane. Um, I love all the little puns that you threw into your presentation. I thought that was really fun um, and just enjoyable to listen to. Um, I also, you know, other things I love that you own your manufacturing. I think that's really cool. And I really love the mission um, and partnership um, that you are going to start. Uh, so that was, that was really cool. Um, I did want to hear more about, you know, testimonials. I, I would like to see more of those or more about influencers and because you mentioned influence an influencer and then didn't really mention how you were going to, you know, use that um, as fuel for the fire, basically. Um, so I would like to hear, you know, a little bit more about that. And then, you know, you told us a ton about what peanut butter and other nut butter shouldn't have in them. And I absolutely agree. But I want to know what's in your peanut butter. Like you never showed me what was actually in your product. Um, and if I had never tried it before, then I would have no idea. Um, you know, what are you using to replace those bad oils and things like that? Um, I think that would have been really helpful to know. Right. Um, 
And then other than that, I, I want to know what you would be using the investment for just a little more specific on where my money would be going if I were to invest in you. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I loved your pitch. I, you know, it's a great product and I think you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, just to answer Dr. Ziegler's curiosity here about where the funds would be going, where would the funds be going? So um, it would be to continue working with Ashworth and what we were doing there. And then also for additional manufacturing equipment to increase our production. Excellent. Thank you so much. Mr. Moran, what are your thoughts here on Michelle's presentation? What feedback and what questions would you have for her? My feedback is pretty simple. Michelle, you are so fun. I laughed so many times during your pitch and you have got to let that out more. Like it, you are so fun. And I mean, we've met in person. We've had some nice conversations. You're, you take, you, you, business does not have to be serious. Like, it, you are yeah. so fun. And the minute that, that gets out, I'm like, oh yeah, like there's, there she is. There she is. So the whole health angle, I just don't feel like fits this brand. Like I, I, I didn't get the whole mica different oil. Like literally after you had spent a few minutes talking about Jif and bugs and peanut butter, I was like, Ooh, I haven't had Jif in forever. Oh, it sounds delicious. Right. So instead of, I think the big butter thing was hilarious, but I, all I want to do is hear you talk about gone nuts jokes and cracking nuts. And I want you to show people eating the nut butters and saying, I'll put this shit on anything and showing people eating it with a spoon and people putting it on fruit and people putting it in smoothies. And then the weird things people put, put them putting on bacon and then putting like, I just want to see people eating it and loving it and talking about how freaking delicious it is and how I want to buy more of it. And oh man, I go through three jars of these a week. Like that's what I want to see in this brand because you're fun. The brand is fun. The products are delicious. And now, and then from there, show me the market size, you know, show me the other brands, show me RX bar, show me not. So show me the other brands that have different kinds of nut butters. And if you were to simply say, I, I, I honestly, if you had said that the problem in the market is that nut butters are boring and they shouldn't have to be boring, I think you would have, I think you would have shined. I think, I, I, I think you would have, <laughs> I think it would have been irresistible if you had just shown the, <laughs> Stan just posted something hilarious in the chat. Um, if you had just shown the shelf and been like, womp, womp, boring, let's put some chocolate in here. Let's put blueberries in here. Let's put, and you show, you show a clip of you making it in the back, throwing things in. Like, I want to see that, right? That is what makes me excited about this brand. With, without that, it feels like a nut butter brand and it, it could be any health, it could be any health product that doesn't have soybean oil. You know, like right. it's just, I just doesn't feel like you. And if you're going to try to justify a $2 million valuation without sharing revenue, without sharing comps, there's got to be some really exciting piece of this. And so that's what I always craving. I am a freaking super fan of your brand. I think you are a blast. And I think if you bring that out more in here and into the operations of your business, you can't help but win. Got it. And that's what. That was our Valentine's post. We started taking a play on all of our stuff and we posted our date me and then we posted naked and then we posted Sin City. And we were like, if you need a little Valentine help, grab one of these and then we'll let you do the rest. Perfect. And so, how did your audience yeah. respond? Oh, they thought it was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You, you already put this shit on everything, try it on your body and see what happens. I mean, there's just so many <laughs> funny things you can do with it. But anyway, your product is fantastic. It's fantastic. And I think 
if you had more fun with it, people can't help but buy it over and over again. And that to me is what is missing. It's like the soul of that. You're the soul of that brand rather than it being like the anti soybean oil. Like that, that could be anybody, but not everybody can be gone nuts. Got it. Thank you. That is such phenomenal feedback. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, my children are watching at home, so I'm glad you're referencing rubbing nut butters all over naked bodies. So that is great. That will be a great dinner time conversation tonight. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, Sam, what feedback or questions would you have here for Michelle? Well, first, I'm really glad Ryan went first because that actually, he, he literally echoed a lot of things that I had written down in a lot of thoughts. Secondly, I'm really glad that Stan mentioned his kids are watching. So I have the idea to shape the young minds of America going forward. So I don't know. I might want to just, Michelle, use this time to go talk to Stan's kids, but that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) So I will say the very first thing I wrote down was super fun pitch. And then I wrote down like two questions. And then at the very end, I had a mild panic because I had no other questions written down. Because the end kind of surprised me because I was thinking like, well, how about at some point in time we'd get to a few other things like the revenue or those kind of things. There was just like some, there were some structural pieces that were in place there that I didn't quite get as an investor. So you don't have to, and a lot of times the things we leave out are because maybe they're not what you don't feel like are the strongest pieces. But I think if you take a mixture of what Ryan was saying of saying, hey, this is the excitement around it. Because with a food brand, you and this is going to go back to the feedback I was giving uh, to the to to just previously to this is the um, knowing what customer you're going after. If you're going after like if you're going after the afflicted customer about eating bugs and their peanut butter, you have a fair amount of education you have to do to the oblivious person to be like, this is why you shouldn't buy this and you should buy this. Um, I think that that's like your second tier once you've exhausted the fact that people just like to try clean ingredient, tasty things. And so you shove that in their face and you get good feedback off of that. That's a whole lot easier than trying to play defense against all the other pieces that are out there. And then to the other points of like showing some of the comparisons that this market already exists. I mean, clearly Jif, I think Jif, don't they own Justin's as well or something like that? Like like there's there's a very, maybe not Jif, it's a major player. Maybe it's Smuckers. Smuckers owns Justin's. Um, Smuckers owns Jif. Okay, then maybe they own Justin's as well. I know that there's there's an ownership chain that is in place. <laughs> Whatever it is, there is a there's high end peanut butter is there's a shift that's going that direction. High end nut butters, there's a shift that's going that direction. So just showing that side by side that the market exists, um, I think is one thing I'd add into your slides because it's it's a very clear place to go after. But I couldn't echo what Ryan said enough that with what I'm assuming your brand size to be, that getting out there being fun and letting people try the tasty treat is what's going to sell the business. Got it. Thank you. You bet. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much to Dr. Jenna Ziegler for joining us here today. We are so appreciative. I, I am actually, I, I got teary eyed a little bit earlier with those who pitched um, before we did pitch week. And uh, it, it is phenomenal to me that we have an amazing former student of Ryan's here. Dr. Ziegler, <laughs> as someone who's on our pitch panel to give feedback, but also the, this is the first time we've had all female pitchers here. Um, and I just truly want to say thank you so much, ladies. Um, it, it, it is an honor to know each of you. So thank you to each of those who've presented. Thank you, Dr. Ziegler, for being here. <sighs> Sam Prentice, I love you. Thank you for being here and giving valuable feedback. Um, let me say uh, to everyone who's watching, um, first and foremost, any investors who might be watching understand that nothing was solicited here today, but the contact <laughs> me slides are there on the internet for everyone to see. And these brands are absolutely phenomenal uh, to take what these businesses and these wonderful business women have done and concisely try to throw it into 12 or 12 and a half minutes is impossible um, okay. because they are so phenomenal and their true badassery is indescribable. Uh, So if you're an investor or you think you want to see your money grow, I'm just saying there are some contact me slides maybe to review. That being said, uh, once again, at capitalism.com, we believe in being the change. When you look at our logo, we say be the change. These ladies uh, are going to go and change the world. Um, We're going to save more pet lives. We're going to end obesity. (laughs) And we're going to make nut butter great again. So Mm. thank you so much 
uh, for being the change. And if anyone's interested in building a business that can actually build, grow, and scale and change the world, capitalism.com. There's lots of cool links there for free content. We're more than happy to help you on your journey. With that being said, Brian, you're my freaking best friend, man. I love you. <laughs> well, there's, <laughs> there's there's one more thing that we got to say before we go here, Stan. Yeah, you, you got to say well, words. Okay, well, li- listen, everybody. There's a There's someone on the call who never draws attention to themselves never draws attention to themselves and gives it out to everybody else. And it's Stan the Man Way. So none of this happens without Stan the Man Way diving in and pouring into your business, connecting all of these people and bringing them in and just over serving all of you and making sure the whole team is focused on you. So give some hashtags and some love to Stan the Man Way, who tirelessly is committed to capitalists like these three women who are going to go on and build incredible brands. And because of his commitment, because of our whole team's commitment to your success, if you do this work, it works. It, to- it totally works. You know, I'll, I'll give some more love to Michelle Michelle and I, when we were in Kentucky, we were sitting down and she was talking about how this model that we teach is a totally new, fresh way of doing business that she hadn't done before. And there's so much fast growth that can happen if you guys just embrace and believe that what you have is meaningful, that people will want it, and that the grind is the best, most fun part to building a seven and an eight figure business. Thank you all for being here. We love you. We're rooting for you. We have your back. Thank you, Stan. Thank you to the presenters. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you to all of you. We'll see you soon. Bye.